fail. Yahweh has always been merciful to us. So let us always find the time to give him the honor and the glory that's due to his holy name. Because truly, Yahweh is in the process of saving us. So let us consider these things because we know that we cannot save ourselves. Many people think that they're in a position of where they can do so much about saving themselves. But if Yahweh don't do it, it won't get done. We can believe that we can say anything we want to. We can believe anything we want to. But if Yahweh don't do it, then it won't get done. And Yahweh has a special way of doing things that he's done from the beginning. And man don't want to deal with these things. But truly, like I said before, Yahweh is consuming fire. And if we don't do the things that we need to do, then truly all of this would have been in vain. And all of us would end up in that lake of fire. Except for his mercy, no flesh would be saved. But Brother Steve, read the oracles of the church and invite him who stands at the door that he may come in and sup with us and us with him, that we may continue to read out of this great legacy and consider what we read that we might do what's necessary to be saved. I'm going to read the oracles of the church beginning at First Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent love among yourselves. Hmm. For love shall cover the multitude of sin. Praise Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man have received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim giveth, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yeshua HaMashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ephesians Chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim for the anointed one's sake have forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of Elohim as dear children, and walk in love as the anointed one also have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. Amen. But fornication and all uncleanness, all covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Amen. Revelations chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold! I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Amen. He that has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the church and Holy Convention. i like to start our class today in Esaias, Esaias chapter 12, and verse 1 through verse 6. Esaias chapter 12, and verse 1 through verse 6. Verse 1, And in that day thou shalt say, O Yahweh, I will praise thee. Though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away, 
and thou comfortest me. Now, why would Yahweh have anger against us except to be for sins and for our shortcomings, right? But it said, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Go ahead, brother. Verse 2. Behold, Elohim is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Adonai Yahweh is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, praise Yahweh. Call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto Yahweh, for he have done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Amen and amen. Uh, chapter 53 and 1 through 54 and 10. Chapter 53 and 1 through 54 and 10. Verse 1. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yah re revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Elohim, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Praise God. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and Yahweh have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Why? Because man just man's heart just is not set right to serve the true and living God. Man has been raised up in various systems upon the earth, and man is about cash. Man is about power. That's all man is about today. Man don't know the true and living God. And man really don't want the true and living God in his life because it cramps his style. They fake at it, but they really don't want God uh, uh, in their life. But go ahead and read, brother. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. And we need to take we need to take note of uh, of some of these things because um, we've gotten to the place all the problems that uh, our brother went through with being rejected uh, uh, by his people and then some members of his family mm -hmm. and all of the problems and everything that uh, 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 he went through. He never complained. He went on and did the things that he was done, uh, that he was supposed to do, knowing that he was going to be brought to the slaughter in the end of things. And he never opened his mouth about the things that people did against him. But see, we can't do that. No, no. Somebody do something wrong with us. We got to stand up on our head and turn flips and tell everybody else in town. So and so did. Like, what can somebody else do about it? What you do is you go to that person. If you can't deal with that person, lay it on Yahweh's altar. He'll take care of it. See, just do what you're supposed to do. Go ahead and read, brother. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Hmm. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. 
He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Hmm. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the small with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Not only did he uh, did he put us in a position to where our sins could be forgiven, and that we can stand in Yahweh's grace, but he also uh, sits on the right hand of the Father to make intercessions for the transgressions that we make. The only thing we have to do is don't make yourself filthy. All of us are going to sin and come short of Yahweh's glory, but as long as you don't blaspheme, you stand a good chance of receiving salvation. Yahweh said, you just do what I tell you to do. Do what you can, and I'm going to do the rest of it. Because we ain't going to, how, who can save who? None of us can save our own selves, and we know that a lot of us think that we can because of, we think we God's gift to the earth, but it don't work like that. Yahweh is the gift to, God, uh, uh, to this earth. And if we don't do the things that he say do, then truly we're going to end up uh, in that lake of fire. This is why he's given us all of this opportunity and all of this time to get things in order before the return of his son. And if we don't have things in order by the time his son returns, then we might as well go ahead and pick up our little coat and go ahead and walk on over to the lake of fire where the beast and false prophet is going to be at. But we'll go ahead and read, brother. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1. Sing, O barren, thou that dead of not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that dead of not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, says Yahweh. Hmm. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Euro Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. Hmm. For thy maker is thine husband. Yahweh of hosts is his name, and, the, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the Elohim of the whole earth, shall he be called. For Yahweh have called you as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of you, when you were refused, says your Elohim. Hmm. For a small moment have I forgot forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, says Yahweh, your Redeemer. Praise Yah. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be wroth with you, nor rebuke you. Read that again, brother. Verse 9. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be wroth with you, nor rebuke you. So have I sworn that I will not be wroth with you, nor rebuke you. Only thing you have to do is try to keep yourself in order. And you're always going to take care of his business. I mean, you can't just do what you want to do and expect to be and then run and fall down caught, uh, crying all over the covenants and promises. But if you do the thing that you try to do, the thing that you do, some of them is going to uh, uh, happen and some of them are not. But what did Yahweh say? He said, uh, uh, I have sworn that the waters of no more, as I have sworn that the waters of no more should go over the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be wroth with you, nor rebuke you. Remember that. See, man is going to always stand up in your chest about something, because man think he's God's advocate here on the, on the earth. He think he's Yahweh's prosecuting attorney, and that he's his executioner. But Yahweh is taking care of his business. He is taking care of his business. And like he said, uh, 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 if you do this, then I'll do that. 
If you do this, then I'll do that. So the only thing we have to do is put ourselves in a position to do the things that we need to do. And as we know the Spirit's going to take care of those things, but then Yahweh is going to do the things that He's supposed to do in blessing us that we might receive salvation. And that's what it's all about. It's about receiving salvation. But go ahead, it ain't about no power here in this kingdom here because we see what that's coming to. But go ahead and read, uh, Steve. Yes, sir. Last verse 10. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, says Yahweh, that have mercy on thee. Amen and amen. Now, the reason we were called was to give us a purpose worth dying for through baptism. This gives one the power to attend holy conventions and to be nurtured by the Spirit as to whom we should worship and how to utilize the gifts of the church to the praise and glory of the source that we received it from. But be warned that baptism is a covenant and a doctrine all to itself. It's the beginning. It's an infatuation. It's a time of a new romance. But in order for it to become justified, we must remember the, uh, the vows that we made in prayer before and after uh, uh, we confirm the covenant sealed in the holy blood of the Messiah. Many people say things and they do a lot of praying and so forth and so on because they be feeling good and uh, feeling that Yahweh showed them a blessing. But we have a tendency to let things come out of our mouth before the angel. And the scripture tells you, say, don't say before the angel it was an error because he will not pardon your sins. Although none of us are righteous unto ourselves, and we all fall down. Worship, service, prayer, and grace is the catalyst that drives us on. It's the works of the Spirit among us. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 1 through chapter 5 and verse 23. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 1 through chapter 5 and verse 23. Verse 1, the Proverbs of Slomo, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, hmm. to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. And these things don't just come upon us just because we think we are so smart or so educated. These things come upon us because these are the things that we have to be taught through the Spirit. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. And you can pay attention to the things that go on in the congregation. It's the reason why we have this purging that goes on in, con in this congregation uh, 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 every so often because in the purging we find out that a wise man will hear and will increase learning. But what happens is a fool refuses to hear what the Spirit says to the church and hold a convention. And it's very easy to tell when uh, when uh, uh, the Spirit is bugging someone, they can't stay in the sanctuary. Doing holy convention, they're back and forth up out of the sanctuary. You know why? It's the Spirit that drives them out. Yeah. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 6. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Hmm. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Well, we know our father is Yahweh, right? And we know that our mother is the church, right? This was shown in Revelation 12, the woman in heaven, right? Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 9. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and change about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. 
Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Hmm. My son, don't walk you in the way with them. Refrain your foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wake for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Hmm. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scornings, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Hmm. Because I have called, and you refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded but you have said it not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Now we know that we're going to have to deal with, the, with these situations here during the, great, during the tribulation period before we get out of this country. We can see the things forming now. See, like I keep saying, uh, our salvation is closer than we think. And we need to do the things that we, if we want to attain salvation, we need to do the things that, uh, that we need to do. And believe me, if you don't believe that you can receive your salvation coming here, then you need to go where you think that you can receive your salvation because you're going to have to be saved. Yeah, go ahead and read, bro. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 28. Then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Hmm. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of Yahweh. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Like he said, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. All you got to do is do the things that you're supposed to do. If you if you just if you just try, Yahweh is going to give you the strength to keep on doing it. All you got to do is just keep trying. Go ahead and read, brother. Proverbs chapter two, verse one. My son, if you will receive my words. And hide my commandments with you, so that you incline your ear unto wisdom, and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry after knowledge, and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver, and search for her as for hid treasures, then shall you understand the fear of Yahweh, and find the knowledge of Elohim. It all depends. You, you find things when you look for them for the right reason. When we, when we look for things uh, as, as, as it pertains to our salvation, to try to find our Creator and to try to be led by our Creator, when we look for those things, we're going to find those things. But also, when you go in here looking for things to smite some with, someone with, that's what you're going to find. But you won't be doing what Yahweh said, because Yahweh said, uh, uh, greater love than no, can no man have than to lay down his life for his friends. You gotta understand what kind of wisdom. You got wisdom of the world and wisdom from above. So some people could be wise and dumb at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, brother. Uh, uh, it's quite a few people that are uh, uh, wise in the world and wise in the word. Then you got people that's wise in the world and dumb in the word. See, simply that shows you where people's heart is. This is where they spend ninety percent of all the increase and 90% of their time is in the things of the world that satisfies them. For truth, right. 
which wisdom you need to be, you need to be Yah wisdom or Ma's wisdom, you know. Correct. Say the wisdom of this world is foolishness. You're absolutely correct, You're absolutely correct. Where we stay? Verse 6. For Yahweh giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. But he never came here and stood up here and told you one thing, did he? Did he? See, that's what, that's what folks got floating around. You don't need no man to teach you anything. But my question is this. If you don't need no man to teach you anything, why didn't you know these things before you heard the things come from this congregation? See? See, that's not giving y'all with the glory and the credit that's due to his holy name because he called us all in sin. Yeah. Right, right. Like Paul said, how can you know unless you have a teacher? But see, you got some brothers walking around talking about, well, you don't need no man to teach you anything. All you got to do is read your book because we all got the spirit, which spirit. I don't see you in holy convention and it was commanded. Right? When that when that shafar blows, I be wondering what folks be doing. You know why? It's the call of worship. When the trumpet blows, what happened? It, it's blow, it blows to call the congregation to, uh, 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 when we blow it, we blow it to call the congregation to holy convention, don't we? You see? But then, if people don't hear that trumpet, maybe they just won't hear the trumpet that all of us are going to have to hear uh, when we have to get out of here. Let's see. I think in the John, and he said, you need no man to teach you. That's what was speaking to the, to the disciples about that. Of course he had not, not right. Paul and them got the revelation from the Of, of mm-hmm. course, brother. He wasn't talking to everybody. He, sure. he was talking to everybody when nobody had been in church. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't nobody been doing anything with if he's talking to everybody. He was talking to. It's just like uh, on the day of Pentecost, brother, when the Spirit came. A lot of people read this book and they think everybody got the Spirit, but didn't nobody get the Spirit but the holy apostles? You see? So this shows you that all of us are going to have uh, uh, things of the Spirit, but we're going to have it in degrees. Because if all of us had the same knowledge and understanding about things, then it wouldn't be no sense in us having holy convention. But to come in here, pray. Right? You get on up out of here and go on home. Because we know everything else, right? Yahweh leading us all right around through everything we need to do, right? Well, y'all know that don't work like that. You have to sit down and plan things. Pray about them. Plan things. And say, okay, make it happen. That's the way things have to be done. And like the Messiah said, anything you ask of my Father in my name, I will do it. Well, there hasn't been anything that we haven't asked that we haven't received. Yeah. Go ahead and read, bro. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Hmm. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Discretion shall preserve thee. Hmm. Understanding shall keep thee. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man. From the man that speaketh forward things. Who lead the paths of uprightness. To walk in the way of darkness. Who rejoice to do evil. And delight in the forwardness of the wicked. Whose ways are crooked. And they forward in their paths. To deliver thee from the strange woman. Even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, which forsake of the God of her youth, and forget of the covenant of her God. And do what? And forget the covenant of her God. Listen to that. And forget the covenant of her God. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 18. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. That thou may walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1. My son, forget not my law. But let thine heart keep my commandments. Mm-hmm. 
for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. What do you say right on the table of your heart? Mercy and truth, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of Elohim and man. Not because you so much walk in the law. He say you 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 know he say uh keep them in your heart. You know write them in your heart and so forth and so on. We're gonna walk in them and we're gonna fall. You see, but he said do not let mercy or truth forsake you. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse five. Trust in Yahweh with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear Yahweh, and depart from evil. It shall be help to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Honor Yahweh with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of Yahweh, neither be weary of his correction. For whom Yahweh loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Okay, let's back up a little bit here, uh, 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 brother, to verse 7. It says, Be not wise in your, uh, in your own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. It shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Honor Yahweh with your substance and the first fruits of all your increase, right? All of your increase, right? Folks say, well, you know, you ain't supposed to tithe money. You just supposed to tithe food. If money is increased, ain't that part of all? Huh? But see, what folks believe that they, they're supposed to do is we know that we don't have any farms and animals and all that stuff, right? So what folks believe that you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take your tithes and then go and buy what you believe that you're supposed to give to the priest and take it to him. And how are we going to pay bills with that? Yeah, go ahead and read, brother. Folks don't care nothing about what the scripture says. When folks get ready to vote, they're going to do just what they want. When folks get ready to stand against God, they're going to do just what they want. They don't care what you mean. Go ahead. I don't care. You go through here and show people, and they really can't find the answer to what they're looking for. And guess what? They still won't believe what you had to say, and they didn't find the answer. Then you go show them the answer. Well, I got a problem. That's the only answer you can find. Yeah. Just do what you're told, and you might receive salvation. Uh, go ahead and read. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 14. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you can desire are not to be compared unto her. Hmm. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honors. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Yahweh by wisdom have founded the earth, by understanding have he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down to do. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Amen. Then shall thou walk in thy way safely and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou laugh down, Thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Hmm. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked, when it cometh. For Yahweh shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Praise Yah. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, 
when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Mm -hmm. Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when you have it by thee. Right. See, this is why, you know, uh, 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 me and the brothers was uh, uh, talking last night. In this congregation, you know what? You know where a big portion of the monies that come in this congregation go? It goes back into the congregation. You know why? Folks just haven't got the substance they need in order to survive. So it doesn't make sense for us to lay it up, lay it up someplace if we got a family of seven, eight people getting ready to get put in the streets, does it? Does it? How can you say you're a family and you love each other when you're letting your people get put out? That don't make sense. Go on and read, bro. And then folks want to know, well, what about this and what about that and what about this and what about that? Go out there and ask some of them people out there in the congregation. Maybe you get an answer. Yeah, go ahead and read. Bro. Verse 29. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Hmm. Strive not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. If he haven't done you any harm. I mean, if a man sin against God, then he haven't done you any harm, right? If he didn't do it against you. So why would you strive against a man that has done you no harm? Then that means that you're striving without a cause then, doesn't it? Because what he, the, the atrocity was not against you. The atrocity was against the living God. We, we, have to, we have to learn where to draw the line at between our things and the things of the Spirit. Because we don't, it's very easy to uh, become puffed up and step over that line. See, but you always call us to peace. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 31, Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. Hmm. For the forward is abomination to Yahweh, but his secret is with the righteous. The curse of Yahweh is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the habitation of the just. And guess what? You can tell when the curse is there because, man, they keep getting more and more and more and more increase. Get so much increase they don't even know what to do with it. See, just throw away increase. Just get it. Just know it's coming. Just go spend tons of money every day. You, under, you, you know what that is. You remember when you read Ezekiel 28 chapter? Remember who was given all the wealth of the earth? Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, we've had wealthy people that come up, uh, that came up, that uh, 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 that 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 Yahweh has blessed. But guess what? They were his servants. They were his worshippers, and they tried to do exactly what he said do. Go ahead and read, bro. And then when you go back and look at those people, especially with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the twelve tribes, they were they 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 were wanderers. They were wandering around among many people, and they had a great entourage with them. They needed the things they needed just to survive because they hadn't been given the land at that time. But go ahead and read, brother. And the wealthy, you know, the wealthy don't understand they're giving this wealth to share it with the poor, right? Man, they man. Don't, they covet, sit on what they have, right? Man, don't you believe that? <laughs> don't you believe that? No. We know what it's all given for. Mm -hmm. We know what the wealth is given for, but we know what people are going to do with the wealth. People think when they receive increases for them to, to use it on their own. But a lot of times, you already got what you need, right? You got a refrigerator. It's working good, right? It keeps cool. All you buy, you put in there, and it takes care of your business, right? But you want to go buy a $2,000 refrigerator because it dispenses ice and water. Huh? Delvin there is working, right? Well, what's the sense of the ways? Take that $2,000 you got and give it to the poor. And then maybe y'all will give you a 50-foot refrigerator. Yeah. Of course. Of course. The, uh, people, Yahweh give people uh, wealth so that they can uh, 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 give to the poor. And I'm not talking about, when I say wealth, I'm not talking about making people rich now. I'm talking about the income that you receive. We know that none of us make a whole lot of money, but you always make sure that if, 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 what, if what you got, if it's needed, if somebody needs it, be the son of God for them. Give them what you need. You know why? Brother, that's part of your treasure. That's part of your treasure. 
God, like that scripture says, Yahweh loves a cheer forgiver. Not necessarily to the church, but when you give to that brother there, or that sister there, or whoever, who are you giving to? You're giving it back to your creator, right? Okay. Okay. We know he ain't going to spend no money. See? Like I heard a brother say, well, I, I tell you how I'm going to pay my tithe. I'm going to come out, and I'm going to take get my paycheck, and I'm going to throw it up in there, and all the stays up there that he can keep. What kind of stupid stuff is that? Brian would go down there, them brothers and man, didn't I hear you last week say that uh, uh, you had uh, uh, you needed some, uh, some 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 change to help you pay your car note? Yeah, brother, if I don't pay it, I'm already three milks behind. If I don't pay it, they're gonna pull it, man. Get it, brother. Money. Now we're you know, we're pulling it up the tree. You're gonna get pulled to make paper. Right. So Right. If you got a car, the material, everything comes from earth. Right. Right. Okay. Y'all be giving. And guess what? When you don't do what you wanted to do, brother, you, y'all notice that these rich people don't really, really get a chance to enjoy their, uh, their wealth. You know why? They're too busy trying to get more and trying to keep people from taking what they got. Mm-hmm. Too busy counting them pennies. That's say I had. I had a million dollars yesterday. If I do this, see, I can end up with a million three. I can, I can, I can. But what about the people I've been in the neighborhood, especially with them folks that's buying them CDs you put not? Mm. You ain't read, bro. Mm. Proverbs chapter three. Now nah, everybody want to walk around here, uh, hip hop stuff. In other words, going in all these cities and everything, trying to get the young folks to vote. For who? Who are we going to vote for? It's against the law for us to put a stranger over us, right? In regards to whether Bush wins it, whether, what that other guy named that's running? Kerry wins it, or whether they give it to a dog. We ain't going to do no good. We ain't going to fare no better out of it. If you think so, go up there in Mississippi and toot your horn and see what happened. They'll hang you up in the tree like they did that brother tree. And y'all notice, none of our politicians and big men has said a word about it yet, have they? Huh? We got the NAACP, the ALCU, and all of this Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and everybody been mum on that, haven't they? Go on and read, man. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34. Surely Yahweh scorneth the scorners, but he give grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Hear, you children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Hmm. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou go up, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou run up, thou shall not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Hmm. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, 
and drank the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Hmm. The way of the wicked is his darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Hmm. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Mm -hmm. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Now, when he talks about the heart and so forth and, and so on, we, we know just about what that's all about. The heart don't do no but pump blood. He's talking about your mind. That's your control center. That's your heart right there, your control center. It's keep sound wisdom. Keep it up in your heart, right? Keep it in your mind. Keep Yahweh's words before your eye. And Lucifer's going to do everything he can to, to make you fall. If you fall, remember one thing. Yahweh is merciful as long as you don't blaspheme. But if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you might as well go home and give it up. See, Anything else you can be forgiven for. And like, like Isaiah said, uh, uh, there's none not righteous. There's one, there's none that's righteous. No, not one. He said, I'm a man. And he's, he's Yahweh's prophet. He had more of the new covenant than any other prophet in here. To show you Yahweh's love for him, right? But what did he say? He said, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. But what did the angel do? The angel got up. Went, took that coal off the, off the altar and stuck it on his lip and said, man, your iniquity is purged. Go and do what you got to do. So when you fall down, don't let people look down on you because you, you committed sin. All the sin that comes short of Yahweh's glory. What you do is get up, brush yourself off, ask forgiveness for that man. Well, you better ask forgiveness before you get up. But go ahead and... <laughs> Brush yourself off and then go ahead and do what you got to do, man. Don't worry about what people come to you with and how people look at you and so forth. Worry about how the angel of the Lord is looking at you and how he's got to direct you. Because if you do, if you watch what people, what people do and what people say, you never will attain salvation. You know why? You're going to find fault with what everybody does. These folks over here do that. These folks over here do that. Well, why you don't go down there? Because them folks over there do that. Now you're putting a block up in front of your salvation, aren't you? Because you don't approve. Go ahead and read, brother. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1. Hold up a second. Okay. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow down ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Least you should ponder the path of lives, her ways are movable that you can't know them. Hmm. Hear me now, therefore, O you children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Least I give thine honor unto others, and thy yields unto the cruel. Least strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And you mourn at the last, when your flesh and body are consumed, and say, how have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me? I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Drink waters out of your own system, and running waters out of your own way. Mm -hmm. Let your fountains be dispersed abroad, 
and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only your own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Amen. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant robe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thy ravished always with her love. He's talking about the church now. Go ahead, brother. Verse 20. And why will you, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the eyes of Yahweh, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be held with the cause of his sin. Own, his own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cause of his sin. In other words, he ain't, his wickedness is not going to even let it, allow him to come up out of that. Go ahead and read, brother. Last verse 23. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Amen and amen. Change of purging is a constant. Therefore, spiritual growth toward salvation is optional only to those not rooted and grounded in faith uh, as it pertains to the grace that we receive of God. Understanding that all have transgressed, Yahweh's grace shows us that Yahshua's love for us is pure and long-suffering. It's the bond that keeps the fruit uh, on the tree planted by the Spirit uh, uh, for worship and for specific services. But when the fruit is given to change, an evil wind blows violently, shaking the tree. Then that which is given to change falls to the ground, hoping to take root of itself. Evil winds have no mercy nor love. It's like infatuation, that second-handed lust which has plagued us all, all of our lives. And if we don't get rid of it, truly, we shall not be saved. Matthew 22, in verse 1 through verse 14. Matthew 22, in verse 1 through verse 14. You know, every time somebody comes in here and gets baptism, I used to go back there and watch. I got the place I stopped watching. You know why? Brother, it's been a long time since I had my baptism. It's been a lot of water under that bridge. But guess what? It's not going to deter me from doing what I'm supposed to do. If Yahweh save me, glory to Yahweh. If he don't save me, it's still his will. Glory to Yahweh. Ain't nothing I can do about it. Yeah. Uh, 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 Matthew 22, in verse 1 through verse 14. And Yahshua answered and spake unto them again by parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Hmm. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it hmm. and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Went to something that caused them that they can make some profit out of, right? Go ahead, brother. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Now we know that this is what happened to their prophets, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. He sent the Babylonian Empire, the Medio Persian. Let's go back further than that. He sent the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Medio Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire upon us, didn't he? And then let this divided beast scatter us to the four corners of the earth. Go ahead, folks. Verse 8. Then says he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. So he's talking about old covenant Israel, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 9. Go you therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid them to bid to the marriage. Mm -hmm. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was 
furnished with guests. Mm -hmm. Both with the bad and the good, right? They was all come, all of them came to the wedding, all of them there sitting down at the wedding, waiting for the feast to take place. Bad and the good, right? Let the wheat and the tares grow up together. See, okay. Now I didn't say it said let the wheat and the tares grow up together. Sometimes you can't recognize the tear. But see, the scripture tell you, put unruly brothers away from you. Okay. Let's not get caught up in that. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Now he knew he was going to a wedding, didn't he? But he chose not to have on a wedding garment, right? Go ahead, bro. He figured, you know, well, the people that was bid before, you know, the, the ones that were supposed to go, they wouldn't go. So he's going to accept me any way I come. You go to a wedding, you have on a wedding garment. Go ahead, brother. Verse 12. And he says unto him, Friend, how did you come in here not having a wedding garment? Mm-hmm. And he was speechless. Nobody told me I had to have a wedding garment, man. I mean, you go into a wedding feast, that's the way you told you. Don't nobody have to tell you you have to wear a wedding garment to a wedding feast. You're going to the king. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. That shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but... Few are Many are called, but few are chosen to salvation. Chapter 13, and verse 10 through verse 17. Chapter 13, and verse 10 through verse 17. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why do you speak unto them in parables? Yahshua answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever have, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not, from him shall be taken away even that he have. Hmm. Therefore speak out to them in parables, because they see and see not, and hear and they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their eyes are dull of hearing, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Hmm. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Great men and amen. And what we see is we it's a lot of things that uh, uh, we understand that our fathers had no idea of what it's talking about. You know why? It wasn't their time. They didn't need to understand. That's why when Daniel say, and I saw and I understood not, and he say, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He say, go your way, Daniel. See, because these words are sealed until the time of the end. So it's a lot of things that we know that Yahweh has blessed us to understand so we can see how urgent that our job is, how urgent it is that we find the Spirit and grab onto that Spirit and don't let it go. Uh, 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 Titus 2 and verse 11 through chapter 3 and verse 6. To the elder that, the, the, the apostles... And what we are sure they didn't know too much on the Only when he came and opened their understanding. Right. It wasn't about how right. much knowledge. Right. Like, like the people said, man, where these folks get all these letters from? Man, these are fucking dumb folks. Where do you get all these letters from, man? The Messiah had to give them the Spirit. And then oh, after he gave the Spirit, had the Spirit open the understanding. Yeah, you may be greatly beloved of the Father, but man, them angels, man, them angels don't care too much about us. Because we too wishy-washy about them. 
And that's all we're supposed to do, brother, knowing part and prophesying part, because the Messiah is going to set everything in order. If you know everything, then where's your faith? Mm-hmm. See, like I was telling uh, uh, some brothers once, I said, brother, how long you been here? Well, I've been here six years. I said, brother, I had been in, in the Word over 24 years before you came here. Mm-hmm. And I'm still 24 years ahead. And you told a lot of things I ain't been able to talk about yet because you don't understand it. If, if, I, give you, if I give you sugar mm-hmm. and you don't understand that, what are you going to do when I give you this strong whiskey over here? Mm-hmm. You know it's going to be done up with it. You have to say we not be all the wise. We destroy ourselves. Right. Right, right, brother. That's why I try to teach this word. There's a lot of things in it I run into problems with. It causes me some personal problems. Not to my understanding is dark and only, but it causes me some per- personal problems because I got other things in my mind I want to do. <laughs> you know, and all of us go through the, through, through the same things, you know. So when we look and we see somebody else fall and we look around and we see that we are still in the congregation, thank you all that they, that, 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 that they are still here too. Uh, it shows you that uh, that he's forgiven them uh, just as, as well as he's forgiven you. But that don't mean that, like he said, uh, where are your accusers now? The lady said, no man accused me. He said, well, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more, lest a worse thing happen to you. Uh, uh, Titus 2, and pick that up at verse 11 through chapter 3 and verse 6. For the grace of Elohim that bring of salvation have appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great Elohim and of our Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, hmm. who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Okay, verse 14. Who gave himself for us, right, uh, 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 through his death and through our baptism, right, that he might redeem us from all iniquity that, that is past, right, and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous for good work. All you got to do is just try to do what you're supposed to do. All you got to do is just want to do what you're supposed to do. And, and the Spirit's going to take that up because of what's in your heart. The Spirit is going to take that up and do it for you because we can't do it. We know we can't. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 15. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority, let no man despise thee. Hmm. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good works, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Hmm. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of Elohim, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. 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 Go ahead, brother. Which he shed on us abundantly through Yahshua HaMashiach, our Savior. Okay, my brother. Now let's go into Ezekiel 36 and verse 24 through verse 35. Ezekiel 36 and verse 24 through verse 35 show you the results of the things that he's done for us. Ezekiel 36 and verse 24 through verse 38. 38? 36, 24 through 35? 38. 38. That, yeah, that's uh, Ezekiel 36, verse 24 through verse 38. Verse 24. For I will take you from among the heathen, 
and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water. Wait a minute now. If we already been baptized and all of us walk around here so holy we floating up in the air this high, why would he have to pour clean water upon us? Go ahead, brother. Verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Praise God. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgment. After I put my spirit in you, right? That's going to cause you to walk in my statutes and keep my judgments, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 28. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. I will also save you from all your uncleannesses, mm -hmm. and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that you shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall you remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Amen. Not for your sakes do I this, says the Adonai Elohim. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus says the Adonai Elohim. In the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the wastes shall be built. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, Yahweh, built the ruined places and planted that that was desolate. I, Yahweh, have spoken it, and I will do this. Do it, I'm sorry. Verse 37. Thus says the Adonai Elohim, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am Yahweh. Amen and amen. Those of you who have remained steadfast in the faith, time and various spiritual wrestlings among us has cast serious manifestations uh, uh, concerning our faith. Faith that we, uh, that if we remain faithful to our calling, that Yahweh will save us. Although life is cold and many dreams are torn apart when, when, when good works are burned, whether natural or spiritual, the saints have kept their wedding garments on. Not because we are so holy or justified by law or works that we have done, but it's the works of the Spirit uh, uh, and not of man. It shows that if you are the servants called and sent forth uh, uh, to bid all to the marriage supper, then Yahweh is keeping you clean up in order for you to do what you need to do. Therefore, your steadfastness and unyielding faith is the will of Yahshua due to the predestination. It ain't got nothing to do with what we will or what we think. It got to do with what Yahshua wills. How is it possible to survive so many trials of our faith, suffer so many works to be burned, yet the family have continued to stand uh, in their lot, knowing that we shall grow in wisdom and in grace. How is it possible except we be guided by the Spirit and except the Spirit put it in our heart to remain steadfast? St. John 15 in verse 1 through verse 27. The question that the, um, what we just read where uh, these things were going to take place, that is after the imparting of the new mm -hmm. covenant. Mm -hmm. So we see God saying, I, I will at that point 
that prayer will truly be come, coming true and says, your will be done on earth. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's when it be done. Once we get back into the land, the Messiah come, put down all rule and, and, and so forth, and give those the spirit that he's, uh, that he's going to give, that's when your kingdom, your kingdom has already come. Your will is being done in earth as it is in heaven. That's when it's going to take place. Not before, God. Not before. Um, how can you serve the true and living God the way that you're supposed to do and you and this child on captivity and, and uh, he already told you obey the laws of the land so it'll go well with you. How can you serve him? You got to pay taxes, ain't you? Well, then the taxes go to Satan, don't you? But I tell you what, we pay them taxes but we never write to the federal government. We go how loyal. We go pay somebody to do them taxes, right? But we don't ever go to the federal government and say, man, I'm a slave. I, don't, I shouldn't be paying no tax, uh, taxes. This is my reparation. <laughs> Dude, we pay that, don't we? Whatever, what is it, 28, 32%? Don't we come down to the church? Uh, uh, John 15, verse 1 through verse 27. Go ahead, <laughs> Go, go catch that fish. First one come up and take the money out of the mouth and go pay for me and you. See? Obey the laws of the land so to go well with you. Okay. Uh, uh, we complain, but Satan take that money, brother. They're over there in Iraq with it right now. Over in Afghanistan. They're all over there. They're all over the world spending your money, outsourcing jobs all over in India and all over the world spending your money and giving your money to do it. John 15, and pick that up at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bear not fruit, he taketh away. Hmm. And every branch that bear fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. Right. You got to abide in the vine, right? We got to abide in the vine. But people don't want to abide in the vine. You know why? People have their own ideas of what they want to do. They're entitled to that. So when people get their own ideas, if they're different than what you know that you got to do, then let them have their ideas. They're entitled to it. They just can't do it here. Go ahead, bro. Verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Hmm. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Hmm. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Mm -hmm. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Now, doesn't that make sense to... To, to put aside uh, uh, a lot of our natural things so that we can do the things that other people to be saved? Doesn't that make sense? Go ahead, brother. Verse 14. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Adonai doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you. 
You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Hmm. That whatsoever you shall ask of Yahweh in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that you love one another. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hate of you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Adonai. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Listen to what he's saying. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they don't know him that sent me. Go ahead, brother. Verse 22. See, that's why, that's why y'all have never, I've been coming on TV for 16 years, 17. And y'all notice I've never got on TV and said nothing about none of these other uh, Israelite brothers. Y'all notice that? It's for a reason. Sometime when you get a chance, chance to read St. Mark, pick it up in about chapter 9, about Brown, verse 23, and see what the Messiah had to say about that. But see, we got lawyers that want to go in here and want to talk a whole lot of yin-yang, but they won't follow their own instructions. Go ahead and read it, brother. Verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Hmm. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. If I had not come to Atlanta and talked with you about the things that you that, that, that you know, you would not have any sin. You know why? You wouldn't be serving God no ways. See? You wouldn't have any sin. But because you've heard Go on and read, bro. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass the word might that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Verse 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send out to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which shall proceed from, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me, and you also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Because you've been with him from the time that you first heard the word and came under the blood. Uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 12 through chapter 9 and verse 8. He says, chapter 8 and verse 12 through chapter 9 and verse 8. Verse 12, say you not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear you their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify Yahweh of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense, to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait upon Yahweh that hide his face from the house of Yaakov, and I will look for him. Hmm. Behold, I and the children whom Yahweh have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from Yahweh of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Sion. Praise Yah. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their Elohim, for the living to the dead, hmm. to the law, and to the testimony? 
If they don't speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly be staying and hungry, and it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their Elohim and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. Now surely the Spirit called us to service. Surely we are all here because we have hope that the Spirit will save the tree planted in Atlanta. But none of us are here by our own will or power. It is the love of he uh, uh, who wrote your names and your works and your reward in the book that has been given to Yahshua uh, uh, Hamashiach. Since the so-called civil rights movement, when our people began to call themselves Gentiles, None of our younger people have been taught of the cruelty our fathers and mothers suffered, nor do the masses consider these things to be uh, of importance. Therefore, are we in the infancy of repeating many of the hardships the fathers suffered at the hands of the Gentiles of Christianity. Today, with such an alarming number of family structures destroyed, with so many unstructured, miseducated young people being thrust upon an already failing economy, with our people being uh, replenished, uh, 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 replaced rather, uh, in the workplace by uh, people of other nations, and having the Willie Lynch syndrome still being uh, a plague among us, we, being a people, are in for a very, very rude awakening. What we don't understand is that the basis of our problem have to do uh, with spiritual issues. Subsequently, by ignoring and refusing to deal with the things uh, uh, of our past, many of our people are being driven deeper into darkness by the prince of darkness. You know why? They love darkness. This is why Isaiah said they're going to look up on the earth and, be, and behold trouble and dimness and they shall be driven into darkness, right? Go ahead and read, bro. Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 1. Nevertheless, the damnness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nation. But there was still a remnant, right? So the dimness was not going to be complete darkness. The Yahweh is going to always have his light for his people, regardless to what come up. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 2. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, Upon them have the light shine. Don't tell me we don't dwell in the land of the shadow of death, knowing that America is going to be the first country to go. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. You have multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They draw before thee according to the joy and harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. Hmm. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Hmm. For unto Israel a child is born. Unto Israel a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty El, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of thy weed and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts will perform this. The Adonai sent a word into Jacob, and it have lighted upon Israel. Praise Yah. Uh, chapter 5 and verse 8 through verse 30. Soils and He's speaking about this water coming up in the earth. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can go ahead and you can read the things uh, 
Uh, you read a lot of prophecies and a lot of people don't know what has taken and what ha 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 hasn't taken place. But what you have to do, you have to, comp you have to compare these prophecies with his history. Or either have a t teacher that knows what happened in history and then they can bring you along with and save you a lot of study. Uh, 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 but it's good to prove things for yourself. Uh, 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 chapter 5 and verse 8 through verse 30. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place that they may be placed along in the midst of the earth. Hmm. And mine ear, said Yahweh of hosts, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair, without inhabitant. Yes, ten acre of vineyard shall yield one bar, and the seed of an almond shall yield an ephah. Hmm. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue on tonight to wine and flame them, and the harp and the bow, the tabret and pipe and wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of Yahweh, neither consider the operation of his hand. Right, two or three o'clock in the morning, you hear five hundred watts coming down the street. Doom, 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 doom. Right, right. Uh, everybody look, turn on TV. Everywhere you look. We went to a party, my brother's birthday party. Now, I don't know what the disc jockey was thinking of. All us old folks over there to the party, and they playing all that hip hop, and everything they played had sex in it. Everything they played had sex in it. When they played stuff that come from my generation, they played part of it and throw that other stuff back up there. I guess that's to catch us out on the floor so we do something, you know. And sitting up in that little room, man, you couldn't even stay up in this brother got a 500 watt system and got to turn it all the way up. You see? And they love this music. People go to wake up in the morning, first thing they do is turn on the radio. They get in the car, first thing they do is turn on the radio. Turn it up, find some music, everybody happy. Niggas walk around bouncing, getting crunk and everything, right? Right? It's all day long. And then we go in the house at night and turn on TV and we go into BET late night. And you know what we get out of that, don't we? Right. Go on to read, Steve. Yeah, the brother, brother, the brother, he, was, he wasn't a baby himself. <laughs> he wasn't that young. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> what do you mean, we, we, we experienced that quite a bit up here on the Sabbath day, brother. Folks come up here and be sitting over there someplace, man, with all the, the car rattling. And they think everybody want to hear that, John. <laughs> Look, what he doing, man? He thumping. Mm -hmm. Don't want me to be that junk, man. I done got too old for that stuff, man. This stuff hurt my ears now. <laughs> <laughs> Go on and read oh. Steve. Verse 13. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell have enlarged herself, and open her mouth without measure, hmm. and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. Hmm. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humble, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humble. But Yahweh of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and Elohim that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Praise Yah. Then shall the lamb speed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cause of vanity and sin as it were with a cart rope. Hmm. That say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come that we may know right. it. Right, let us see it. Let it come forth that we may know it. But we still going to do what we want to do. See? We want Yahweh to hurry up and get this thing here over with. No, I don't. No, I don't. You know why? I know I ain't got myself together yet. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Hmm. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Right, I think, I feel. Right, go ahead, brother. Verse 22. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine 
and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Right, pagan religion, mixing up junk with the truth that you've gotten. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Right, going around convincing people, follow me. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 24, therefore as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their, their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of Yahweh of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Not only did they cast away the law, they despised His word, right? Those words are those instructions that we receive. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 25. Therefore is the anger of Yahweh kindled against His people, and he have stretched forth his hand against them, and have smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Mm -hmm. And he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far, and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. Hmm. None shall be weary, nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep, neither shall the girdle of their loins be loose, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken, whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. Their horses' hoofs shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion, they shall roar like young lions, yea, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey, and shall carry their way safe. And none shall deliver. Amen. And in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. And we know that this is during the great tribulation period that he was talking about right there. And the thing that's going to take place uh, uh, during uh, uh, that period of time. Chapter 50 and verse 1 through chapter 51 and verse 23. Chapter 50, and verse 1, from chapter 51, and verse 23. <coughs> verse 1. Thus says Yahweh, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your church put away. Hmm. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I drop the sea. I make the rivers of wilderness, their fish stinks because there is no water, and die for thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. The Adonai Elohim have given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waken up morning by morning, he waken up mine ear to hear as the learned. Hmm. The Adonai Elohim have opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turn away back. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Adonai Elohim will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Adonai Elohim will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that fear of Yahweh, that obey up the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and have no light? Let him trust in the name of Yahweh and stay upon his Elohim. Behold, all you that kindle a fire 
that compass yourselves about with sparks, walk in the light of your fire, and in the sparks that you have kindled, then shall you have a mind hand, you shall lie down in sorrow. Hmm. Hearken to me, you that follow after righteousness, you that seek Yahweh, look unto the rock whence you are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence you are dead. Hmm. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bore you. For I called him along, and blessed him, and increased him. For Yahweh which shall comfort Yehuda, he will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of Yahweh. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving, and the voice of melody. Praise Yah. Hearken unto me, O my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The owl shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, you that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear you not the reproach of men, neither be you afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Praise Yah. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of Yahweh. Awake, as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Are you not it that have cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Are you not it which have dried the sea, the waters of the great deep? that have made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over. Therefore the redeemed of Yahweh shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I, am he that comfort you. Who are you that you should be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man which shall be made as grass? And forget of Yahweh thy maker, that have stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth, and have feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Mm -hmm. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loose, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. Mm -hmm. But I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, that divided the sea, <coughs> whose waves roared. Yahweh of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in your mouth, and I have covered you in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Yehudah, You are my people. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem which have drunk at the hand of Yahweh the cup of his fury. Thou have drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling, and wrung them out. Mm. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she have brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she have brought up. These two things will come unto you. Who shall be sorry for you? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? Thou sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of Yahweh, the rebuke of thy Elohim. Hmm. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus says your Adonai Yahweh and your Elohim that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of your hand a cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. You shall no more drink it again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict you, which have said to thy soul, Bow down that we may go over. And thou have laid your body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. Hmm. 
Okay, yeah, 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 okay, my brother. Uh, as we see, Yahweh has set a harvest for, for those written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Therefore, the Spirit had ca has called us for a specific service that we might have purpose and an, and an expected end. So remember your covenant and be very diligent in your worship and service uh, 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 of your predestination. For Yahweh will have judgment without mercy upon those who forsake our calling. Why? Because an innocent brother and many other holy Hebrews gave their lives willingly that you, the remnant of Israel, should be saved. But let's hear the conclusion of this matter. It's Micah chapter 7 and verse 1 through verse 20. Micah chapter 7 and verse 1 through verse 20. Yahweh tell us everything we need to know. The only thing we have to do is abide by the things that uh, that we say. Surely we all going to violate his law, but let's not vex the spirit. Because the spirit will not pardon the sin. Uh, 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 Micah 7. In verse 1 through verse uh, uh, 20. A lot of times when you know the truth, you can get off into the, into the thing, into some thing that cause problem, and it is blasphemy. And we all know that the Messiah said, All men of sin shall be forgiven men except blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Um, uh, Micah 7, in verse 1 through verse 20. Jerusalem going to try to convince me the other day that when the Bible speaks of one of great... Uh, that when Yahshua said he would go away, but he would not leave us confidence in sin life, so that was a, uh, that was a... Uh, 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 Muhammad. 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 One of the two. Said. I said, not so. Muhammad, uh, I told him. I said, he sent Muhammad to, Muhammad to the Arabs. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Right? He sent Muhammad to the Arabs, right? To get them all stirred up, busted up all their gods, and made them worship another, one single pagan god. <laughs> That's who he sent him to. He didn't send him to us. <laughs> See? We messed around and got this thing here back in the 50s, right? Yeah. And the things we got wasn't even what uh, Elijah Muhammad was taught. Uh. See? He, after he came out of jail, he went and dealt with a Moorish a uh, 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 prince. That's why when they first came out, they should wear them purple fences all the time. Mm -hmm. That's where he got that garbage from he got from. See? His God, I guess he's God and left. You know, he, he met his God in jail. Mm -hmm. you know? So I guess I guess his God had left and he couldn't find his God. So what did he do? He went and talked to a Moorish prince. And you look at that junk over there. Read the Quran, man. The Quran tell you, anybody who don't believe in this should be killed. Mm -hmm. See, but they know name God. <laughs> he said all the prophets were, 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 was uh, uh, practicing Islam. I said not so. No, sir, brother. Islam is the last one to show the last, the last big paganism to show its face on the scene. Where did it start among the children of Shem? Gentiles had Christianity, right? The Maxims had some everything. They never really got this stuff together. But uh, 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 in the air, they had Islam, right? Okay. Okay. Then he thought I was a uh, thought I was a member of the NAACP. I said the NAACP. I said you know what the NAACP stands for? Niggas on the Well, I told him uh, niggas all about chicken pieces. <laughs> I gotta remember that. I gotta remember that, my brother. Michael seven. <laughs> Michael's Michael seven. Verse one through verse twenty. Verse 1, Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits as the great gleamings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desires the first ripe fruit. Hmm. The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. Hmm that they may do evil with both hands, earnestly the prince asks and the judge asks for a reward, and the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. For a price. Go ahead, everybody looking for something. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. The best of them is as a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh, now shall be their perplexity. Trust you not in a friend, put you not confidence in a guide. 
Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lies in thy bosom. Mm. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter rises up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore I will look unto Yahweh, I will wait for the Elohim of my salvation. My Elohim will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. Amen. When I sit in darkness, Yahweh shall be a light unto me. Amen. I will bear the in indignation of Yahweh, because I have sinned against him, until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is Yahweh thy Elohim? Mine eyes shall behold her, now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. In the day that your walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria and from the fortified cities and from the fortress even to the river and from sea to sea and from mountain to mountain. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood in the midst of Carmel, let them feed and be shun in Gilead as in the days of old. Mm -hmm. According to the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hands upon their mouth, their ears shall be deep. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of Yahweh, our Elohim, and shall fear because of thee. Who is an Elohim like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. You will perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which you have sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Amen and amen. And all we have to do is have faith in these things because it's our faith that's going to make us do the things that we're supposed to do. And truly, if we have this faith, and we do the things that are we supposed to do, then you should have no doubt as to whether Yahweh is going to save you or not. There's not one time in my, since I've been under the blood have I doubted whether my Creator was going to save me or not. If I doubted it, I wouldn't have been here. No sense in working for nothing. And if I doubted that, then truly I wouldn't have been here today. And if you doubt that Yahweh is going to save you, many of you wouldn't have been here as long as you have been. So put your faith in your Creator. Make sure you do the things that you're supposed to do. And... Uh, Pray always with an open heart and an open mind that Yahweh would keep us together in the bond of unity of the spirit of peace, that we may learn to love each other, and that we may learn to do the things uh, uh, that's, con uh, that's convenient for the spirit that we should do, that we might receive salvation. So it's been said, so let it be written, even so come, Lord Yeshua, and save us all out of all of our troubles.